Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU, and today we're going to go over some of the latest details in the realm of jailbreaking. There's some new information to go over and I wanted to share it with you guys. So be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you're eagerly awaiting the release of a brand new jailbreak for iOS 10, hopefully up to iOS 10.1. All right, so let's go ahead and get straight into this. First of all though, I wanted to mention that if you have yet to watch any of my past iOS 10 jailbreak update videos, then down below in the description, there will be a link to my playlist. It will also be on your screens now via the cards. I highly recommend watching through these videos because all the information outlined in said videos is not only incredibly important, but also still very, very relevant. In fact, in today's video, we're only going to be going over some of the new details to emerge on the jailbreak scene. We're not going to touch on any of the past issues or updates. So again, definitely check down below in the description if you have yet to. And with that said, let's go ahead and get straight into this now. First of all, talking about iOS 10.1. Really, there are three things I want to talk about in today's video. First of all, iOS 10.1, then we'll get into Zerodium and bug bounties in general, specifically focused on jailbreak bounties. And then number three, we're going to talk about I Hate Snow and one of his recent releases. But just to ensure that you guys don't get your hopes up, no, there is not a new jailbreak out right now as of recording this video. We do expect one soon. Again, just be sure to watch through the videos I just talked about for kind of a time frame of when to expect a new jailbreak. All right, so now switching on over here to Apple's Developer Center, you'll notice, of course, we do have iOS 10.1 Beta 1 that was issued on September 21st. But what's really weird is that we have three betas of Mac OS 10.12.1, and in fact, Beta 3 was seeded on today's date. So getting a close up of that, you'll notice again, Mac OS 10.12.1 Beta 3 was released today. Below the build number, it says October 3rd, 2016. Now, Apple typically likes to release both Mac OS beta updates and iOS beta updates on the same day. And it's weird enough that Apple seemingly forgot the second beta of iOS 10.1 last week when they released Mac OS 10.12.1 beta 2. But it's even weirder today that we don't have iOS 10.1 beta 2. Again, this is three weeks following its initial release. It was posted on September 21st, 2016, which leads us to either one of two conclusions that a new beta is going to be released either later this week or Apple is prepping for iOS 10.1's public release, which is the most likely answer out of the two. Again, seeing as we haven't had a new beta of 10.1 these past two weeks. So we don't know when it's going to be released, but Apple is almost certainly rushing it because really the only reason that iOS 10.1 exists is to offer the portrait camera mode for iPhone 7 Plus users, at least currently. Now it's unknown whether Apple will add additional changes to 10.1 before it's released to the masses, but at this point, seeing as we haven't had another beta of 10.1, it is unlikely, and Apple is almost all but confirmed to be focusing strictly on that dual camera portrait mode for 7 plus users. So hopefully we could expect iOS 10.1 soon, which remember is almost certainly contingent upon the release of the next jailbreak utility. Now let's go ahead and switch on over here to Zerodium. Now you may have heard about Zerodium in the past. In fact, I created a video on the group when they were four last year, and they've since started to go through the news rounds lately for this one specific reason. They've now reopened their bug bounty program, and they've actually upped the reward. So when we go ahead and scroll down here to the actual list and the changelog, you'll notice that for an Apple iOS 10 remote jailbreak, they're now offering $1.5 million, guys. Yeah, that's right. This group will pay $1.5 million for the development of a new silent jailbreak. And what I mean by silent jailbreak is one that can be deployed on a device remotely without the end user necessarily noticing. But this does not mean that a new jailbreak will come of this. In fact, quite the opposite. Zerodium is absolutely toxic for the jailbreak community at large. And what I mean by that is that these guys will never release anything to the public ever. In fact, they're actually a broker and they essentially handle the deal between developers and other individuals with the intent of purchasing jailbreaks, potentially with malicious intent. See, the clients of these guys, Zerodium, could either be companies interested in corporate espionage or, in fact, entire governments. And what's even scarier to contemplate is that what if these guys actually accept the money from terrorists? I mean, a private and stealth jailbreak in the hands of the wrong people could be absolutely nasty. 
So we really don't know whether Zerodium has any moral guidelines or not. They don't actually specifically outline whether they turn individuals away and whether they screen people to actually see what their intent is with these jailbreaks that they're actually selling. And of course, they do offer bounties for more than just an iOS jailbreak. In fact, they do the exact same thing for being able to remotely root the latest version of Android, though the price is significantly less because of course there is more money to be found in creating iOS jailbreaks and it's substantially more difficult to do so as well. And one thing that I thought of recently, kind of trying to connect the dots, remember iOS 9.3.5 was issued in suing iOS 9.3.4's release, which we thought was going to be the last version of iOS 9, just patching the iOS 9.3.3 jailbreak from Pangu. Well, again, that firmware was issued to patch what appeared to be a silent jailbreak, guys. Now, this could be something that Zerodium actually sold to individuals with deep pockets looking to actually deploy a silent jailbreak, because remember, it did fix that Pegasus or Trident hack. Remember, we went over it in depth in this video. Definitely check it out. It will be linked on your screens now via the cards. I'm not really going to delve into it right now. Other than to just really say that this was extremely dangerous to those it actually targeted. Now, it wasn't really dangerous to the masses, but it could be, and something like this could also be equally as detrimental and harmful to the public if it ends up in the hands of the wrong people. In fact, word on the street was the Pegasus and Trident hack could have been used or was used for cyber warfare. Now, this is some pretty scary stuff, guys, and Zerodium actually takes away from jailbreaking because they divert the attention of talented individuals who otherwise may be able to release a jailbreak to the public and instead add that crazy huge layer of monetary compensation. Of course, we don't know whether those individuals would actually jailbreak in the first place without some sort of huge monetary compensation like what Zerodium offers, but either way, it definitely subtracts from the incentive of releasing a public jailbreak to the masses. So the one takeaway from that, guys, is that Zerodium is definitely bad and they have a negative impact on the world of jailbreaking. You don't need to worry about Pangu though because I'm definitely going to get questions about whether Pangu is going to end up selling their jailbreak to Zerodium in the future. That's not going to happen. Pangu has their own monetary connection with jailbreaking thought to be handled by the PPF that is installed for Chinese jailbreakers. What's also even more scary before we move on to talk about I Hate Snow is that Apple offers less for the exact same thing that Zerodium does. So when we scroll down here just on this article, I just wanted to use it as a point of reference. Apple pays $200,000 for vulnerabilities in secure boot firmware components, and it just goes down from there for every other component, every other exploit that they're actually willing to pay for. So someone who could jailbreak could either sell it to Apple with a clean conscience, or they could sell it to Zerodium for much, much more. What do you guys think would happen, and what do you think most people would do if they were presented with an opportunity of such. Again, let me know down below in the comment section what your thoughts are on Zerodium, bug bounties in general, and specifically Apple offering less than Zerodium. All right, now I wanted to briefly touch on I Hate Snow before we kind of wrap things up here with this video. Now, there was a lot of confusion when I Hate Snow dropped this on GitHub the other week. Essentially, it is a iBoot32 patcher, and people were confusing that with the actual exploit I Hate Snow used to achieve a permanent jailbreak on 32 bit devices. Don't be confused. This isn't that. This is merely the tool or the vehicle that I Hate Snow used to deliver his 32-bit exclusive iBoot exploit. So this isn't an actual jailbreak itself, though it could be used by someone who has an exploit of their own to create a jailbreak, but that's not what this is. Remember, I Hate Snow has demonstrated since the days of iOS 7 the ability to jailbreak devices on previously unjailbreakable firmwares. I actually also explained this in depth. I will have a reference to that on your screens now, as well as down below in the description, but this in itself will not lead to a jailbreak. That's not to say all hope is lost though for the prospect of a 32-bit jailbreak, because remember the last two jailbreaks from Pangu have not included support for 32-bit devices, and we don't know whether they will add support in the future with new jailbreak utilities, especially seeing as those devices are being phased out now with iOS 10, they'll be all but lost with iOS 11. But this does add some hope. Again, be sure to click that subscribe subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to. That way I will keep you guys completely updated and informed on every situation related to jailbreaking as it develops, whether it be a new 32-bit jailbreak or just a brand new jailbreak in general for iOS 10 and 10.x. 
Now guys, like I said, iOS 10.1 is going to be what Pangu is going to turn their attention toward provided Apple doesn't then immediately issue another beta firmware and or 10.1 is deemed stable enough for Pangu to actually jailbreak it. And they definitely have something going on behind the scenes. Again, I will let you guys know anytime anything happens in the realm of jailbreaking, just be sure to follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook for even more frequent updates. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCrack Your iDevice community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.